Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this special Friday night edition. It's not. Oh, it is Friday. It I is. I feel like it's Saturday. I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> My wife always one step ahead. Welcome to the Burke Brigade. I'm Matthew Burke. And I'm Jennifer Burke. We are the Burke Brigade, brought to you by the Liberty Daily. Your conservative alternative to the Drudge Report. Visit thelibertydaily.com, thelibertydaily.com, for conservative, Tea Party, free market, anti-communist, pro-life, pro-Christ, pro-traditional marriage, pro-real marriage, and anti-progressive leftists. But I guess I already said communists, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Democrats. And pro-Judeo-Christian values. The values that made America great in the first place. Okay, we're going to start here with this blockbuster story tonight. And you can see this. This is one of the headlines right now at the Liberty Daily. Yours truly with collaboration collusion, if you will, from Jennifer Burke. We wrote this story today on Politistic, and this is from the leading newspaper in Alabama, AL.com. Now, this is going to come as a shock to some of you, some of you rhinos, some of you weaklings, some of you limp-wristed fake conservatives who are throwing a godly man, Judge Roy Moore, under the bus based on a 38-year accusation from 1979 brought to us by the Washington Dumb as a Post, a communist rag owned by Jeff Bezos, a hardcore leftist the CEO of Amazon.com. Why are we saying consider, consider the source? Because this source just happened to endorse Judge Roy Moore's Democrat opponent in Alabama. And we are 20, uh, 28 days away from that election. 28 days. Now, Judge Moore has been in public life for four decades, 40 years. And, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a special election, and so Judge Roy Moore had to go through and ran a very heated race uh, against Luther Strange um, to, to even make it to this point, uh, a race in which Mitch McConnell was throwing tons of money 30 million. against uh, Roy Moore to try to prevent him from winning. So you have the GOP establishment spending $30 million to defeat Judge Roy Moore in a Republican primary. Now, normally in a Republican primary, you don't have the Republican Party really weighing in. They wait until they're running against a A Democrat. Democrat. You know, because what? Because th- it's supposed where to money defeat would be Democrats, better, right? Yes, would be better spent. But not if you're Mitch McConnell, right? His Senate leadership fund, in other words, Senate Rhino fund, is there to defeat not Democrats, but conservatives, well, Christ- Christians. Well, he's always Mitch McConnell has always had constitutionalists an intense hatred towards conservatives. That's why he's always attacked uh, Ted Cruz while. Uh, cozying up to Democrats. Right. You know, Mitch McConnell, who has a F, and you know what that stands for, from Conservative Review, his Liberty Score is an F, a failure. He is not even a Republican. He's a Democrat rocking around with an R on his forehead. He's an absolute fraud. And he is, him and John McCain... Another Democrat masquerading as a Republican, John Thune, another another phony, and the entire GOP establishment 
is throwing Roy Moore under the bus. And here's the thing, honey. This woman or these women that the Washington Dumb as a Post somehow found. Now, if you'll read their article, what they did was they somehow overheard hmm. this at a Roy Moore campaign uh, event. So let, let me get this straight. There's people at a Roy Moore campaign. Who are just quietly talking amongst themselves. Oh, yeah, they're supporting. Not trying to raise a ruckus. Right. I'm not, I'm not buying any of this. Yeah, they overheard a supposed private conversation. And um, at a Roy, you know, something tells me that if somebody really had gotten into a Roy Moore campaign event... And they had that experience happen to them. Something tells me they probably would have started shouting and probably would have, you know, tried to cause a scene. And attack somebody. Bring attention to themselves, attack someone, you know, cause the, you know, police to have to come out and escort them out. Something, not a quiet conversation accidentally overheard by a Washington Post reporter. Now, the Washington Post, if they had any ethics at all, wouldn't even be reporting on this race because they endorsed his freaking opponent. So they can't be expected to be objective. But, and we'll see if the Washington Dumb as a Post reports this. This is from The Politistic. And again, it's via the Washington, via Alabama's biggest newspaper. One of the accusers from this Washington Post hatchet job, which was conveniently produced before the Alabama Senate election, which is coming up on December 12th, wants us to believe that Christian constitutionalist Judge Roy Moore, age 70, a former member of the Alabama Supreme Court who stood up to vicious leftist attacks for his fight for real marriage and the Ten Commandments, sexually assaulted a 14-year-old girl when he was 32 in 1979. And that somehow, after 40 years in public service, keeping in mind that judges are elected in Alabama, they run for office, where more, where more served in the Alabama Supreme Court. Where they're not, it's not a behind the scenes thing where they're appointed. They have to actually run for office, which means whomever they are running against would do uh, research to try to dig up dirt to use against them. So we know that this accuser, Deborah. Wesson, as in Wesson oil, as in slippery, as in greasy, Gibson. Deborah Wesson Gibson. You might get her confused with Debbie Gibson, but <laughs> that was a singer. Is a member of Progressive Politics Alabama. And listen to this. Are you sitting down? I'm sitting down. Is our audience sitting down? Are you guys sitting down? sitting down? If sit you're down. not sitting down... Sit down and pour yourself something. Right. An adult beverage. <laughs> Worked on the 2016 Democrat presidential campaign for Hillary Clinton. Hmm. Oh! The plot thickens. So it's not like there's a political motive there. And guess who else she worked for? Who? A real groper, Joe Biden. A real groper. An absolute a real groper. pervert. And, and not even behind closed doors. Out in no, front. No, you got video of it on YouTube. Even behind young girls doing things that I was just, ugh. Yucking on these 12-year-old girls. He's an absolute freak. But And, and he, it, all that was explained away. Having a biker girl sitting on his lap with her, his hands all over. Oh, that's just Joe. <laughs> that's just Joe being Joe. Moreover. As the leading newspaper in Alabama reports, Gibson also provided services. What she does is she provides sign language. So if you, go, if you go to the LibertyDaily.com, the LibertyDaily.com, you'll see it. There's a picture of her. One is of her providing sign language for Hillary Clinton as she's speaking. The other is uh, basically her and Joe are, you know, tight as a drum. Joe's got his arm around her. I don't know what he's grabbing, but you can bet it's something. And she has got this shit-eating grin, pardon my French, on, on her face, like she just won the lottery. And what did you say, the sign? You said she was holding up a, it's, a sign? It means I love you. 
Yeah, and I love you. So maybe she's in love with Joe Biden. I don't know. We don't know that for sure. But the leading newspaper in Alabama said that she also worked for other leading Democrats like Senator Patrick Murphy and Bill Nelson and shared campaign flyers of Roy Moore's Democrat opponent, Mm. Doug Jones, for the Alabama election, which is slated again for December 12th. So she is a supporter of Roy Moore's opponent. Hmm. She's a progressive leftist Democrat. And, you know, interestingly enough, her sign language services going through her company's um, Facebook page, it's, it's, it's only been for Democrats. Now, I have got some sign language from her for her. <coughs> and and you, can't, you can't see it. Right, right now, Rainy. Ray. Stop. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the name of one of our other dogs whose name doesn't get called because they're quiet. Bentley's being a good boy. <laughs> there, Bentley, you're famous. Ray, zip it. Every time we talk about communists, have you noticed Ray barks? He doesn't like it. He don't he, like he it. He hates the commies. I feel your pain, Ray. I really I think do. he's a commie barometer. And I, 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 th- I think he is. And she has all these anti-Trump political posts on social media. Here's one from September uh, 24th. How fast can we get rid of Trump? Seriously. Time is of the essence. Now, keeping in mind that Judge Roy Moore, while he's his own man, uh, I guarantee you he is his own man. Mm. He has stood up to political fire in Alabama that no man in the Republican Party would stand up to. They would cower and put their tail between their legs, just like most of the Republicans are right now. But he has said he's going, he is in favor of the Trump agenda, the America First Trump agenda. In fact, that's agenda. why, you know, um, Luther Strange was a. Uh... Uh, Mitch McConnell's Obama's Mitch boy. Yep. Uh, so, you know, he was, um, even though for some unknown reason, Trump endorsed him and uh, kind of turned a rally he attended for Strange into a rally for Trump instead, which was interesting. Right. Um, but, yeah, that, that that's a little tidbit of information that's also uh, very, that makes the whole scenario very interesting considering how quickly... Mitch McConnell released a, a statement after de- calling for um, Roy Moore to withdraw from the race after the Washington Post story broke. And now here's here's John John McCain, who I ref- affectionately refer to as John Latrine. He actually called hmm. for Judge Roy Moore to step down. Whether the accusations are true or not. Which, whether they're true or not. Which, you know... He even said that, whether they are true or not. He said the ac- accusations alone. alone are disqualifying. Oh my gosh. So any any person... Right. I use that term loosely. Can trump up... I use that term loosely too. Trump up charges against somebody from 38 years ago... He knows you can't disprove this. There is no way you can prove where you were 38 years ago. Right. There was no internet. There were no cell phones. There's no. There's no record uh, of it. There's no proof. Right. There's no proof. She doesn't anything. have any proof. You know what's interesting, uh, John McCain? I saw something going around on uh, social media early today. Someone said that you sexually assaulted them 30 years ago and prove her to be wrong now. Well, I mean, and he can't prove he it. He can't prove it. So, which John means McCain, he's guilty. The accusation alone means that you should retire. The accusation alone means that you should retire immediately, tender your resignation tomorrow. Well, and he's a rhino, which means he should have retired a long, a, a, a long time ago. And you know, the the sick thing is, and these this is how bad these bastards are. John McCain was subject to these same kinds of smears when he ran for president in 2008. I mean, there's, here's a story from The Guardian. 
Here's a story from The Guardian. This is uh, February 22nd, 2008. McCain denies having an affair with lobbyists. Well, the accusation alone, John McCain. Oh, you can't deny it. You can't deny that. Well, hey, here's something that was more than an accusation. I I should search for the article. I'm doing this from memory, but I I remember writing about this years ago. Um, How McCain left his uh, wife, you know, was running around leaving his wife. Let me find it. I think you need to find that because to me that accusation alone is disqualifying. I mean, anybody that is accused of anything 38 years ago... They should just be disqualified. And it's one month before the freaking election. Are you kidding me? And these idiots are believing this crap. I mean, even Mike Lee. Mike Lee, who is as clean and pure as they come, absolutely got down on his knees and spread his you-know-what and said, I want my name taken off Judge Roy Moore's uh, fundraising email. Because he had endorsed, so he's pulling back his endorsement. Uh, Montana Senator, another you know conservative with a good voting record, uh, Steve Daines, he pulled back his endorsement, and a bunch of other ones, like the weaklings that they are in the Republican Party, are are pulling their endorsements for Judge Roy Moore. Right. Based on this Washington Post hit piece. Right. And here's something, John McCain, that's more than an accusation. Here's an article, 2008, from the uh, Daily Mail. The wife, U.S. Republican John McCain, callously left behind. Um, McCain likes to illustrate his moral fiber by referring to his five years as prisoner of war in Vietnam and to demonstrate his commitment to family values. He pays tribute to his beautiful blonde wife, Cindy, with whom he has four children. But there is another Mrs. McCain who cast a ghostly shadow over the senator's presidential campaign. She is seldom seen and rarely written about, despite being mother to McCain's three oldest children. And yet, had events turned out differently, it would be she, not Cindy, who would be vying to be first lady. She is McCain's first wife, Carol, who was a famous beauty and a successful swimwear model when they married in 1965. She was the one McCain dreamed of during his long incarceration and torture Aww. in Vietnam, Vietnam's infamous Hanoi Hilton, the woman who faithfully stayed at home looking after the children and waiting anxiously for news. When he returned to America in 73 to a fanfare of publicity, he discovered his wife, who he had pined over and dreamed about during his incarceration uh, as a prisoner of war, former swimsuit model, had been disfigured in a terrible car crash three years earlier. So he dumped her. Her car had skidded on icy roads into a telegraph pole on Christmas Eve, 1969. She suffered massive internal injuries and her pelvis and one arm were shattered. When she was discharged from the hospital, her prognosis was bleak. Yeah, so yada, yada, yada. Um, uh, John McCain basically was, you know, going out... Um, when she was, I mean, she said my marriage ended because John McCain didn't want to be 40. He wanted to be 25. You know what happens. It just does. My accident was well recorded. I had 23 operations. I am five inches shorter than I used to be. And I was in a hospital for six months. It was just awful. She says it wasn't the reason for her divorce, but of course not. he was, you know, uh, out and about it doesn't with matter. other people. That, it doesn't matter. You the, abandoned the accusation your, is especially trying to, you know, to, to talk about your incarceration and the pain that you went through, and then you ditch the wife who you pined after because she wasn't the beauty that's that a, she was when you that's left. A, that's an excellent point. But uh, lo and behold, we did find someone with a pair of balls in the Republican Party. A pair of big, solid brass balls. And unfortunately, it's not on the national level. We had to go down to the state of Alabama, Alabama State Rep Ed Henry, who was on with Anderson Pooper tonight. And he called those people that are, you know, running for the hills, running from Judge Roy Moore, who endorsed him, correctly, cowards. Let's listen to this short clip. Lee of Utah and Steve Daines of Montana who withdrew their endorsements and more tonight. What would you say to them and others who may be thinking or trying to figure out what they should do? 
you know, it's, it's, it's sad that we have that many cowards in Washington, D.C. They, they are going to allow, and, and maybe they just don't know Roy Moore well enough, and if that's the case, they shouldn't have ever endorsed him to begin with or been considered to endorse him. But if you really believe that, that this is a good man and you're going to allow it simply the allegation, no evidence, no corroboration, then, and you're going to re- withdraw your support and you're an elected official, then I, I feel you're, you're a coward. Jennifer Burke, comment please. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's it's pretty, I mean, I'm not saying, I know we've seen person after person in Hollywood being accused of this and that, and actually it's gotten to the point where even some of these accusations, you're like, did it really, I mean, I mean, how, how would you prove it? Some of them are just pretty, pretty blatant, pretty blatant, and there was a, a consistent pattern, but... For a man who's run for high-profile offices numerous times for decades, for suddenly this to come out less than a month before the special election, and Republicans dirty now... Dirty trick. Dirty trick. Republicans are now are trying to push the special election to 2018, probably so they can continue to try to push him out so they can get Luther Strange in. It just all seems very strange. Oh, yeah. I saw it Rhino, R- Rhino Establishment Stooge Carl Rove on Fox today, you know... Real shocker here. They're talking about a write-in candidate for Luther the Strange. Right. And, and it just, it seems... McConnell's butt boy. You know, just the, to say that the mere allegation should cause him to uh, have to withdraw, the timing just is very suspect. I'm not saying... I don't I don't know whether or not it's true. I mean, I listened to Roy Moore give a... Uh, I know it's press, not true. I listened to Roy Moore give a press <laughs> conference. He, he seemed very adamant that it wasn't true. I've seen other stories about the uh, accusers... Other aside from the fact that the one is very obviously a progressive, very obviously a progressive, you know, and there are stories that she's worked on his um, his opponent's campaign. But aside from that, I saw a story that one of the women who made this claim was not fourteen; she was actually seventeen. Which, right, a legal you know, age. Yeah, a legal, which, which totally totally changes things. And the fact that the Washington Post supposedly dug these people out, you know, and, and went to to uh, you know try to get them to speak up, it's just all. They did to not me, come my forward. First th- they did not come forward. No. My first thought was this: this could be a case of, oh, we're in a climate right now where all you have to do is make an allegation, bingo, and you can ruin a person's career and life. Now's the time. We couldn't get them. In the first part of the election, we can get them now with this. And I saw, I'm not going to say who posted this on Facebook, but it's someone who has some inside connections, um, a friend of mine, uh, who said on Facebook that um, they, I'm not even going to say if it was male or female, that they had word or knowledge from people in the know that this whole story was planted by establishment GOP. Yep. And she said more, they said more to come. <laughs> More to come later. So, you know, the days of innocent until proven guilty in this country are, are over, I guess. Unless you're Bo Bergdahl and then the government will think about giving you $300,000 for abandoning your post leading to the death of six of your uh, colleagues and going to seek out um, the Taliban because you think they're nicer than the army. So back to who, who just might be the only Republican left with balls in this country. Basically... 99.9% of them absolutely suck. This Alabama state rep, Ed Henry, again, he was on Anderson Pooper tonight on CNN, and he is calling Roy Moore the victim here, the victim of a political hack job. Let's listen to this very short clip. You consider, though, you said Roy Moore to be a victim. Is that correct? Yes, I think I think in these types of instances, you have you have a, a an accuser and an accused, and I think probably more often than not, the accuser is the victim. But I do believe occasionally the accused is the victim, and I believe in this instance that Roy Moore is the victim. I believe he is the victim of a, a political hack job, and who's be, behind it, I don't know. 
I have no idea who paid for, for all of this and who will be paid. Let, let me just give you my opinion on who paid for it. His initials are MM, Mitch McConnell, who had already spent oh, well, $30 million dollars o- to defeat him. OMM, Obama's Mitch McConnell. Obama's Mitch. Rhymes with the B word. Paying for it in weeks to come. You, so you think but somebody is Roy Moore is the victim? I think that's. I think that is exactly right. There is no way in this man's forty-year career of public service that this is just now coming up. It's just convenient. One month before the election, this, this woman, this Wesson Gibson chick. The Democrat progressive politics of Alabama. She actually lives in Birmingham. It's not like, you know, she wasn't in the area all those times she was running for a statewide office. Yeah, why just now? Why now? She could have came out during the GOP primary against Luther Strange, right? Where the establishment could have gotten their way. She could have done that, right? Just just think of what, what what just recently happened in Virginia. The dirty politics that was played in Virginia with this Latino Victory Fund run, running an ad that depicted uh, Gillespie um, in a truck with a, a Tea Party uh, license plate and a Confederate flag trying to run over minority children. That's the dirty politics we're dealing with in this day and age, and Democrats going out and defending it. So, And I yeah. would just like to remind everybody... To remember Mississippi. Hashtag remember Mississippi. And honey, I know you remember that quite well. I do. This was when Chris McDaniel, a Tea Party conservative, was running against the bumbling, mumbling idiot establishment. I mean, he's. there was a report the other day. He's falling asleep during meetings. I think he's 84 years old. He's falling asleep during meetings. Mm-hmm. He accidentally voted the wrong way recently. Thad Cochran. Yeah, and I had to quickly change his vote, right? Right. And McConnell and his minions smeared Chris McDaniel as a racist. Right, as a member of the KKK. Yeah, right? Right. They actually paid Democrats... To vote in the GOP primary for Thad Cochran. They paid them. It's on record. There's a pastor, you can find it on YouTube, that says he was paid to vote Hmm. by Republicans. Fake Republicans. Bankrolled by Obama's Mitch, Mitch McConnell. Who I think is the most corrupt man in politics. Right. They say Hillary Clinton is the most corrupt person in politics. I would put Mitch McConnell right by her side by side. Mm-hmm. Except with with Hillary, I think her motives are monetarily greedy. With Mitch McConnell, they are politically greedy. He wants power. Power to do what? I'm I'm not quite sure. Well, you know, winners, winners set policy and and losers go home. We want you to go home. Your policies suck. You're a Democrat. You're worse than a Democrat. Democrats admit they're Democrats. You're a Democrat and you don't admit it. You're a liar. You're a thief. You're a scumbag. You're a dirtbag. Should I tell them how I really feel? I can't because this is a family show. <laughs> Maybe not so much. Maybe not so much anymore. So, um, this story about Roy Moore. What is this? My lovely wife showing me a new story. Texas gunman Devin Kelly's ex-wife said he had a lot of demons. But it's not. That's actually not a good title based upon what he said. But when we're finished talking about Roy Moore. I do want to say let's a few just, things. Let's just segue to it. Go ahead. Are you done with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm just, you know, perusing the internet, see if there's anything uh, new that's coming out. This is out. the atheist is filled this with demons? I'm shocked. Yeah, so this is his ex-wife, and, and this title it will really weakens what she says, shockingly enough, from CBS News. Yes, she said she's his first wife, she's 25, he, had, he just had a lot of demons or hatred inside of him, she told Inside Edition. 
2013, he pled guilty to hitting, choking, kicking, and pulling her hair. He was then 23. Uh, it was her child that he fractured the skull of. Um, she described a marriage filled with abuse and said she was once threatened by him over a speeding ticket. He had a gun in his holster right here, and he took that gun out, and he put it to my temple, and he told me, do you want to die? Do you want to die? He threatened to kill her and her whole family. You know, it, it, this isn't, and I know people said, oh, we have a mental health issue. I've said it before the last time. I mean, this man was Satan on he this earth. He was demon-possessed. He was demon-possessed. That's not a mental push, problem. You can't give a pill for right, that. You cannot push you can't God that away. out of society. And then don't expect Satan to work through people like him to do his dirty work, to do his evil on this earth and go and, and kill Christians and fracture the skulls of babies. So it's no, no wonder that he shot crying babies. He's a good, at, solid at, Democrat. At, at point blank, basically. blank range. I mean, that's what they, you know, that's how no they, soul. that's how they murder babies. They right. Like someone, their like, skulls. like someone said to, uh, I think it was Piers Morgan, um, eight, you know, when he said, what did this 18 month old child do to deserve death? And someone friend of mine said, 18 months ago, you would have no problem killing that child. That's right. Oh, I did forget to mention one little, one little tidbit about uh, an accuser of Judge Roy Moore, Deborah Wesson Gibson. Wesson, as in Wesson Oil. She's also a member of the Resistance. Yes, I can't believe we forgot to say that. I know, right? I scoured her Facebook before she locked it down. Before she realized that, who knows? I don't even know if it's locked down yet. But before she realized. That there were, um, that she was named in that story from that she's Alabama. Being scrutinized. That she's being scrutinized. And she had, not only did she have a picture of Donald Trump that said, not my president, but she had a picture that said, resist. And you know, this so stuff she is about. a member of the resistance. This stuff about, oh, you have to accept every accuser as the gospel because then it, otherwise, it, it discourages other women. From coming forward, that's absolute bullshit. Well, BS. Look at, that, Bill yeah, look at Bill Clinton's accuser, a serial look rapist. Look at Bill Clinton. Look at Bill Clinton. Look they never that, believed any of them. No, never. And the media brushed it all aside like it was no big deal. Oh, you can't fault Hillary Clinton. I sure as hell can fault Hillary Clinton. She's the one that drugged the women's names through the mud. You know, this this is really funny. I might I might play that. Uh, what R Rush Limbaugh said about decades that. long, decades long, and didn't just thirty eight years ago didn't just happen with Bill Clinton right before he ran for president. These were things. Oh, these were live throughout his entire yes. career. Right, and they were always brushed away, swept under the rug yep. as if they were no big deal. And then when he used his power as the president of the United States to have an affair with a twenty one year old intern, it was written off by the media as. It was two consenting adults. He was president of the United States, and she was an impressionable 21-year-old, and he had her get down on her knees in the Oval Office on the rug and do things to hurt him that uh, shouldn't have been done by 21. Remember, remember, honey, when we saw all the presidents in the Oval Office? Yeah. After, and we saw, we were like, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. Bill Clinton, you could clearly hear See, and he kind of whispered, said, I remember this rug. Yeah, I bet Are we does. sure? You, we, we bet you do, Billy. Yeah. And and Monica Lewinsky down on her knees. Oh, you asked me for John McCain's exact quote yes. that he said against Judge Roy Moore. Because he said, uh, if you're just now t tuning in to the Burke Brigade, brought to you by the Liberty Daily. Your the conservative Liberty, alternative to the Drudge Report? The LibertyDaily.com. <coughs> Pardon me. He said the allegations, quote, the allegations against Roy Moore are deeply disturbing and disqualifying. He should immediately step aside and allow the people of Alabama to elect a candidate they can be proud of. As if people are proud of John McCain. Mm. Yeah. Uh, wasn't he, uh, what's the word? What's the word? I don't know, but while you're thinking about you know, what the here, word here, is. In, in Arizona, how he was basically denounced, he was repudiated twice, What? but there was an, an exact word. Oh, censored. He was censored. Censored by his own party, uh, his own party twice in Arizona. For his liberal Democrat voting record, but yet he, we're supposed to pretend like he has virtue somehow because he got captured. 
I'm not knocking his military service. You know, there's some people that refer to him as a nickname Songbird. I'm not one of those. I don't know anything about it. I wasn't there. But that doesn't give him license to no. then the next 40 years destroy the country. Right. And, screw, you know, to run. To over and lie to their freaking To face. vote as a Democrat. While and and then, Republican. you know, three months before the election, spend millions and millions of dollars he got from D.C. lobbyists. And like Arizona the, Democrats, from right. what we've heard. Like the, like the K Street whore that he is, and try to paint himself as a conservative. Even he lies. Before, even before we moved to Arizona, we would hear John McCain, and I remember, honey, you and I said this many times, oh, John McCain is sounding really conservative. Must be an election year for him. Yeah. You know, obviously in 2008... We voted for him over Obama. I mean, he's probably slightly better than Obama. Maybe we don't know that because he wasn't elected. But he is a Democrat. If you don't believe me, just go to Conservative Review, review and look up and look up his voting record, which, by the way, is sixty-seven percent liberal. Liberal. It's thirty-three percent conservative. Let me say this again. Mm. He is two thirds a liberal. When when you cut it down, so he said, "quote The allegan- allegations against Roy Moore are deeply disturbing and disqualifying. Not whether he did anything or not. Right, just the allegations. Just, just the, the al- statement. Just the allegations. But yet here's John McCain, and he's had allegations like that against him his whole yeah. career, yeah. and we're supposed to believe he's uh, you know as pure as the driven snow. Right. Somehow. Right. You know, married his wife for money. You know, she was a multi, 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 multi millionaire. Look up and see what how her family got her money. I don't recall, but to me, he's no better than John Kerry. You know, who married the ketchup uh, heiress. And let's see here. So we've got another story. We're going to move on now from uh, from John Latrine and. Uh, Judge Roy Moore. And you know, I just like to say something else. He is a Christian. We just got done having Christians targeted in Texas by by a godless atheist, a pagan progressive. You know, and here they are trying to smear a Christian man. I think that is highly highly inappropriate and evil. Uh Senator Rand Paul. Senator Rand Paul was viciously mauled, attacked by, uh, you, you by, a, about- by a progressive leftist Democrat. We'll, we'll, we'll double back. In in his yard, he was he was blindsided, and of course, the media isn't calling it an assault; they're calling it an altercation over yard clippings. Over yard clippings. That's right. Now. Rand Paul was on his riding lawnmower. He had uh, a, a, a headset on. Maybe he was listening to music or something. And he he was attacked, viciously attacked. And might I just say, Rand Paul's not a big guy. No. And the guy who attacked him looks to be a pretty big guy. Right. And a tweet here from Rand Paul. I appreciate all of your support from everyone. A medical update. Final report indicates six broken ribs and a new x-ray shows pleural effusion, which I guess might be fluid around the lungs. Uh, So the conditions are quite serious. And the media, of course, is trying to provide cover. They're coming up with this fake narrative that, uh, like you said, honey, it was over lawn clippings. But his, his neighbors are saying something... Yeah. Totally different. Yeah, his neighbors are saying, no, it wasn't. Yeah. But, you know, you should believe that, uh, uh, I guess CNN still hopes that they're, an apple is an apple and a banana is a banana campaign. Yeah, they need to stuff we'll, the we'll, banana up, you know what. <laughs> we'll, we'll help people forget that they have recently been voted the least trusted name in news, despite their tagline. And I don't know, I, I know you're a big fan of Wolf Blitzer, but... <laughs> Oh, the ah uh, man. He looks like he might have his banana someplace oh where, it, gosh. Where, where it shouldn't be. I don't know be. how that, oh, he's terrible. 
Here's a quote from a neighbor. The Paul's landscaping looks just like everyone else's in River Green, which I guess is the name of the na- neighborhood, because he, he was at his home. Wish I could get him to cut my lawn, said neighbor Robert Warner. As a friend, neighbor, and senator, this is quote, Rand has been first class in every way. What I find amazing is the fact that he cuts his own grass. Our neighborhood is fortunate that the Pauls live here. Mm. Here's another one. The stories of a, you know, air quotes, landscaping dispute or a dispute of any sort between Rand Paul and Rene Boucher, Hmm. uh, B-O-U-C-H-E-R, I don't know, douchey, douchier, (laughs) maybe just douche, are erroneous and unfounded, another neighbor said named Travis Creed. The reason for Mr. Boucher's bizarre attack is known only to him. Statements to the contrary are irresponsible and unnecessary. But we do know he was a progressive leftist, some say socialist, which means he was inspired by Bernie Sanders. Right. Just like the progressive terrorists that tried to shoot down and Rand actually Paul did and others. Shoot. Rand Paul was there too, right? Okay, you had something about... Uh, John McCain, I believe, my dear. No, you were asking about Cindy McCain and, and her money. Her father was a wealthy beer distributor. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure John McCain m- married her for completely pure reasons after he dumped his prior. Isn't that right? Right. Okay, now, I promised Rush Limbaugh, who I'm still pissed at because of the way he handled the GOP primary, but... That's a different thing. He did have an excellent comment today about Judge Roy Moore and Hillary Clinton. Let's play it. Judge Moore, same advice I gave Harvey Weinstein. Hire the best. Somebody who has proven that they can get people off. This is so good. This is just so good. Mm -hmm. I mean... This is why Rush Limbaugh makes $30 million a year, and we don't. <laughs> Try that again. Much more you need to... <coughs> Excuse me, folks. <coughs> Judge Moore, you need to hire somebody who has proven that they can make sure the charges don't stick. Let me try that again. Judge Moore, you need to go out and you need to hire somebody who has a proven ability to destroy the women and the media coming forward with the allegations. And there is one person that stands above everybody in this regard. Her name is Hillary Clinton. (laughs) She not only kept the governor of Arkansas in office. She kept the president of the United States in office. She ran the bimbo eruptions operation. AKA the nuts and sluts campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, her and Paul Begala, who was rewarded by us with a CNN gig and James Carville, the nuts and sluts campaign where they portrayed all of, uh, all of the the twenty some odd women that came forward about Bill Clinton as nuts and sluts, mm-hmm. and remember it was uh, James Carville who said, you know, you drag a hundred dollar bill through a through a tra- trailer, park. trailer park, no no telling what you're going to come up with. Anytime any woman came forward and alleged sexual improprieties, sexual harassment, rape, what have you, against her own husband. She led the team that destroyed those women. So that's tongue in cheek, obviously, but it's it's pretty damn funny mm. because these are the same people that are jumping on Judge Roy Moore are vehement vehement defend, defenders. Vehement defenders, yes. Of Bill Clinton. I mean, he is a Democrat, a serial rapist, is they go to him given for, godlike status. Right. They go to him for statements on, on, on morality. Oh, yeah. 
as 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 if he's somehow the virtuous one. Okay, we're going to take a complete complete turn here into the world of football. Uh, in other words, progressive politics, <laughs> which uh, you know used to formally be an escape from politics, right? But now has become an arm of the Democrat Party. And uh, Je- Jennifer's got a story here, one of uh, my all-time favorite N- NFL NFL yeah, players. Yeah, so he played for both the Houston Oilers and the Seattle Seahawks, but yes. I, you know he has legendary status in, in Houston. But Warren Moon, you know, he played for the Houston Oilers. He actually was discriminated against back in the day because back in his day... There weren't black quarterbacks. Sure, now we have Russell Wilson, we have Cam Newton, you know, we had RG3, you have uh, James Who, by Winston, the way, is kicked out of their league because, you know... Because he's a Christian. Right. Um, it, it, there's tons of black quarterbacks. But back in Warren Moon State, there just wasn't. And coming out of college... He, University of Washington. University of Washington. He was extremely talented, set records at UW. He, yeah, he, well, yeah. He, was, and he was a Rose Bowl winning quarterback. Rose Bowl winning quarterback. And smart. There, I mean, just smart as... Right. But there was the perception because blacks were typically, you know, played running defense back or played running back Defensive that back. there was that a black quarterback really in the NFL couldn't be smart enough to run the system to run the game. I mean, it's, it happened to him. Right. So he went to the CFL, the Canadian Football League, proved his value. Set all these records, won yeah. all these great cups. And then ended up coming to the, the, the Houston Oilers, you know, just had a great football career, became a Hall of Famer. Uh, is now an analyst. He's at, he lives in the Seattle area, I believe. He's at a he he's um, at the Seahawks games, I believe. He's an analyst commentator for the Seahawks games up there. Um, and he's but, a good and he's a good one. We and, live, and we live yes, up there. and he's a good one. So if anybody had room to say, you know, solidarity with Colin Kaepernick, it would have been him. But that's not what he did. That's not what he said. He proved his worth. I mean, he's obviously over it. But he today told TMZ Sports, basically, that Colin Kaepernick has uh, not only put a nail in the coffin of his career, but he questions whether he even wants to play. Because he acts like he wants to play. He turned down a, um, he decided to be a free agent instead of re-signing with the, uh, the, the 49ers. There was a rumor that he was actually offered a contract, might have been league minimum by another team, turned it down. Some of the players, uh, some players... League invite, minimum being, what is it, a million? million dollars. Some yeah, players... I wouldn't have turned uh, that down. I, I'm, by the way, I'm still available. <laughs> so he was invited to some meeting with owners by some players, and he didn't show. You know, all the while, he's going around, you know, being held as this icon. You know, the man, the man grew up in a lily-white uh, neighborhood, very affluent, <laughs> and only gotten to football because of his white football coach who put together a football reel for him for UNLV because no one was looking at him for football. He was better at baseball. You can't say that. You you are such a he racist. He was better at baseball, and that's what people so wanted. Racist. But he wanted to be a football player. So well, Give my black racist wife. <laughs> so Warren Moon questioned whether he even wants to play because he said if he was going to file a lawsuit, he maybe should have waited till the season was over if he did want to play this year. Because it was almost like, does he really want to play if he's going to go and sue the league and then also try to get signed by a football team? The two just don't seem to mix. And you have some judge, as if some crime has been committed. Employers have the right to hire or not hire whomever they want. And collude. They have the right. Yes. And collude. Yes. Like I call you, said, you and, I, and you're a franchisee and I own a team and I say, hey, he's a troublemaker. He's going to drive away half your fans. His talent is mediocre. Right. It, you know, it's not like he's, you know, Joe Montana or Russell Wilson right. even. Yeah, and they act like he's just, that. like, he like sucks. he's a black, half-black Tom Brady. He had one good season. One, good, and, could, one straight downhill. good season. And it's been downhill ever since. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, he also talked, Warren Moon also talked about Bob McNair in his comment, you know, inmates uh, the running owner the prison, the... the owner of the Houston Texans. And he just said, you know what? I think it was just a bad choice of words and a bad analogy. If he could take those words back, maybe su- use some other type of analogy, I think he would. But, you know, some judge is deposing these coaches, demanding their cell phone records and their email. As, oh, yeah. For what? They, they did not. What law was broken? No, nothing. 
What law? Would, is there a I, law? If I were those coaches, I would say, you know what? You could take your deposition and, and shove, shove it up, up your, your no, you know what? Keister. Shove it up your 49er. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, speaking of hypocrites. Uh, I want to know if and by the way, CNN is going to convene panels to talk about this. Yeah. By, by the way, one more thing on uh, Colin Crapperdick. By the way, I'm still laughing about the Halloween cat costume winner. Colin Crapper Dick. Right. Oh, the person that dressed oh, that reminds me. in the cool. Las Vegas hotel. And the, the, the people that were there at this casino actually awarded them the, the Halloween costume prize. I think that is just as funny as 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 funny as they come. But we, we you know, CNN is another one of these virtue signalers. I mean you, you heard Anderson Pooper a little bit earlier. And they're, they're acting like they're as pure as the driven snow. And they've got another lawsuit against them. Isn't that yes, right? Yes, another lawsuit for discrimination. Now, oh, this, racist. Is their, this is the second time. Are they Apparently, racist? <laughs> yeah. Remember when S. Fox was being attacked for this and that? Someone made the observation, Fox actually has a lot more black people working there than CNN or MSNBC combined. You know, everybody at Fox so may then, be skirt chasers, but these guys are racist. Right. <laughs> so then uh, all of a sudden MSNBC gave the the, intele the intellectually dense and inarticulate Al Sharpton a show, um, maybe to try to make up for that. But CNN was sued earlier this year by 175 plaintiffs for racial discrimination. Now they're facing another racial, dis they said they dodged the lawsuit. They face another lawsuit, this time brought on by over 200 blacks. The Atlanta lawyer who filed the lawsuit said his client's accusation against the network are stronger now than before because more alleged victims have come forward in light of the current climate of victims speaking out against those in power. Educated, well-intentioned, experienced, and talented, he said African Americans, I'll say blacks, are being discriminated against. We are drafting a new complaint line by line addressing the issues that he outlined for us. He said of the, the 205 plaintiffs are not overly sensitive or walking around with chips on their shoulder. Um, the first lawsuit alleged that CNN gave blacks lower performance ratings and evaluations. He indicated that 95% of the allegations made by the 205 plaintiffs, 95% of these 205 plaintiffs occurred in the last four years. Well, I would say those allegations are disqualifying. Yes, <laughs> maybe they should have their license pulled over. To quote John McCain, <laughs> it's just the allegations are disqualifying. Right. And they should be second, pulled off the it's air. It's the second time they've had allegations oh. by hundreds of blacks. You know, the allegations are disqualifying. I mean, whatever they are, I mean, if if they're allegations, you got to believe them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, we're going to shift to uh, a serious matter. And... Uh, this is why you turn tune in to. I always say turn in. Why do I say that? I don't know. Turn. I don't know. Probably something subliminal. Uh, tune in to the Burke Brigade, brought to you by the Liberty Daily. The Liberty Daily, your conservative alternative to the Drudge Report at thelibertydaily.com. Uh, oh, hey, honey. Mm -hmm. Can you can you talk about this in just a minute, and we'll end with that. That's act. That's actually. What is that? That's actually better. This freak. Send it to me. George the guy. Oh. <laughs> you mean talk about it right now? No, no, no. Let's talk about this first. We're going to go to something that's that's actually quite serious. So this is uh, via NBC, also on Twitchy. Uh, Savannah Levins of NBC is reporting, breaking. A man has been arrested for having a weapon of mass destruction in Charlotte. Initial <laughs> reports indicate at the at the airport. WSOC TV, the local station there, reports breaking. Charlotte air traffic controller arrested for having weapon of mass destruction. Now they don't say at this time what that weapon was. There's a pic picture of him here. His name, the dude's name, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Paul Danden, D-A-N-D-A-N. -A -N -D -A -N. 
Now, if you go to the LibertyDaily.com, you can see this picture of him. It's it's a, a he- headline story right now, and I'm not going to be judgmental, but I'm starting to wonder what his re- religious affiliation is <laughs> because he looks like he might have some hate in his heart. Looks like. I think he might be a Religion of Peace member. I don't know that. I'm sure we'll, it'll be buried in uh, some story tomorrow. I don't know if he's a Religion of Peace member or not, but I'm just saying it looks like he could he could be. Um, here's here's uh, a, another report here. Charlotte police say they arrested Danden and his roommate at their home. Mm. They had a homemade pipe bomb. Wow. Roommate made it after he gave it to Danden. Now, we don't know necessarily who his roommate is. Anyway, you can easily find that story on thelibertydaily.com. So now we have the story of a prominent Hollywood homosexual, another one who is uh, caught with his, what shall we say, hand in the cookie jar, perhaps? Or, you know, somewhere Somewhere even worse than the cookie jar. So this uh, aspiring, this, this male model said that he was sexually assaulted in 1991 by George Taki, however the heck you say his Takai, name. Takai, Taki. Takai. Um, Whatever he is. The he Star Trek, no, they, the Star they, Trek they, guy. What was his name on Star Trek? I don't remember. I, I don't remember. But he's either. a big commie pinko, big right? Big commie, big, big... Uh, progressive. Progressive. He's big a progressive Republican pervert. hater. Big Republican hater. But he said that he had met him somewhere and they exchanged numbers that communicate from time to time. When he and his boyfriend broke up, he was still very distraught about it. And oh. George Tacky, Tacky Talky, how Ta- the heck you say his name? Tack, I think Tacky. Um, well, tacky might a- be invited good. him out to dinner, and he said he was very good at like, you know, consoling him. He knew I was upset, and that I still was in love with my boyfriend. Oh, so, so sweet. They went back to Tacky's condo for a drink. He said they have a, had a drink, and then he asked if he wanted another one. So yeah. he had another one, and he said after the second one, all of a sudden he was feeling very disoriented and dizzy. Oh. So it was a date rape drug put in there. I oh. mean, disorientation and dizziness Jer- after two drinks. He thought he was going to pass out. Um, he, George Tacky said, I have a giant beanbag chair over there. I bet so he does. So go ahead and sit down in that. I don't so even he said, I leaned my head back, and I must time. have passed out. I won't give you the sordid detail. Well, Please I do have don't. to say this. The guy said when he woke up, his uh, pants were around his ankles. Oh, like George Bill Tacky Clinton's. was trying to uh, get his underwear off and was groping his junk. So that's and rape. saying, I'm just trying to make you feel better. Relax. Oh, yeah, that would do it. So he is, he, uh, I mean, according to John McCain, these allocations are disqualifying. Right, right. <laughs> Facebook, get rid of his uh of his uh ban him profile. Ba- ruin his life. Right. Ruin his life. Right. Take take all the Star Treks off. Everything. The shelf. He has to give back all his money from Star Trek. He's obviously a progressive pervert. He has to give back everything. Destroy him. So that's where we're at in this another crazy day in America, which is still, despite of you know the anti-American pro-communism Antifa commies and their comrades, the communists and the Democrat Party, and their the useful idiots, the dupes, the spineless jellyfish in the Republican Party is still somehow the greatest country on this earth. I, I'm sorry. I want to I add this because I saw this at the bottom of the article. Please do. I'm thinking what made this man come out and say this was after he heard Tacky's statement after Kevin Spacey tried to cover up his uh, his allegations by saying, oh, if they happen, I'm sorry, I was drunk. And by the way, I'm gay. I'm living <laughs> life as a gay man. So, because he thought that's his right. get out of jail and, free and, card. And in regards to that, uh, Tacky said for Anthony Rapp, one of the accusers of Spacey, he has had to live with the memory of this experience decades ago. For Kevin Spacey, who claims not, you know, he took this high horse, high road, I think that kind of pissed this guy off, and he was like, "What? The, what about what the hell you did to me?" And that's what made him that's say a, it. That's a that that's a great men who point. improperly harass or assault do not do so because they are gay or straight. That is a deflection. Oh, of course They do not. so because they have the power, and they chose to abuse it. Uh, of course. Yeah. And then Kevin Spacey's another fudge packer. Okay. Never. Nevertheless, we sign off. God bless you. And God bless America.